died in the US under extremely unusual circumstances, and his distraught mum dug into just how Jack died. What she discovered shocked her. Tonight, she confronts the man that she blames for her son's death. Hamish McDonald has this report, and a warning, this story has some confronting material. I didn't know he was in hospital. I didn't know he was in induced coma. I never got to hold him. I never got to hug him. I never got to say goodbye. Linda Chapman was already doing it tough, caring for her 81-year-old mother and her 30-year-old autistic son. But on October 16th, she learned her youngest son, Jack, had died in America. For everyone that knew him, he was the gentle giant at the back of the room, sitting on a cushion and watching the world dance around him. He was so loved. He was my son. Eight years ago, 20-year-old Jack Chapman fell in love with an American man called Dylan Haffertepen. I know that I love you very much and that I miss you every single day. By all accounts, he was happy at first, but Linda and Jack's friends say he changed, both mentally and physically. Look at my beautiful boy. Yeah. That's him in normal size. This is before Dylan, after Dylan. Look what he turned into. Dylan and Jack are bears, part of a common gay subculture characterised by bigger builds and body hair. But Dylan's extreme fetish was something very different. Dylan had introduced Jack to dangerous body manipulation and master servant role play. I just wish he'd never met him. Linda says her world fell apart when she discovered just how badly things with Dylan had soured and that her son was stuck in a toxic, abusive relationship. The contact had been cut off for some time before he died. Last month, Jack was admitted to hospital with breathing difficulties. He died a week later. I've already sloshed all my tears out. He'd been dead a full day before Dylan even informed Linda. He waits till the day after to tell me he's dead. I didn't even know he was sick. From his private messages to an old friend in Melbourne, it's clear that Jack felt trapped. But Jack's public posts suggest he was still under Dylan's control. I know my son had free will, but he was not in his right frame of mind. He was not the Jack that I sent over there. He had no self-esteem. He'd lost himself in this cult. This was a disturbed boy. It was horrible. Imagine you've loved your boy all your life and you've seen this sort of stuff. Thinking that he's worthless and he's worth nothing. It was everything. As Linda delved deeper, she found an extraordinary contract, setting out the full terms of Jack's relationship with Dylan. He was the master. Jack was one of several pups who had to obey him. Jack was required to legally adopt Dylan's surname, sign over his salary, wear a chain around his neck, and cut off all contact with anyone outside the circle. It was a devotion. It was like some sort of clan, family. And to prove their devotion to him, they had to change their bodies. Linda has also found out that three weeks prior to his death, Jack signed a will. My ex-husband died and left his money to his boys, everything he'd worked for, for their care. I said to the boys, Jack, you leave your money to Ben. Ben, you leave your money to Jack if you write a will, because that way your father's wishes will be carried out. Three weeks before he dies, he writes a will and leaves everything to Dylan. If that's not suspicious, I don't know what is. The money is currently sitting in a Bank West branch in Melbourne. Linda even put some money into the account for Jack's last birthday. But perhaps the biggest shock came when she learned that two days after Jack's death, he was cremated. Even the crematorium told her it was done unusually quickly. Online, Dylan posted his own version of Jack's death. 
that Jack had died from an undiagnosed lung disease. But according to the death certificate, Jack died from diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, acute respiratory stress syndrome, pneumonitis, and critically, silicon injection syndrome. Jack had been getting injections of silicon to enlarge his scrotum, part of a shocking body modification regime. From what I can gather, it was just in the testicles. It may have been in the backside. Jack's own text suggests Dylan had procured and supplied the silicon. It's just like some parallel universe that someone else is living in, finding out all this stuff. It's just ripping me apart to the soul. It's not about being gay. It's about abuse, manipulation. It's about anyone out there that is in an abusive situation and needs to get out. So no mother shall have to go through what I'm going through so that nobody else would have to suffer the way he did. He didn't get out, but maybe someone else will. In an attempt to ensure Dylan brings Jack's ashes to Australia, Linda has had to mask her suspicions. Today is the day Dylan is scheduled to arrive and Linda is at home surrounded by family and friends offering their support. Obviously nervous, she is determined to confront Dylan. He's been keeping us waiting all day. I'm worried that I won't be strong enough to do this, but I have to be. This is about justice, justice for Jack. Finally, Dylan arrives. Oh, no. Hi. <laughs> yeah, of course. Sit down. Yeah. Oh, my boy. So I had to wrap it for the plate. Uh, they come here to um, film the returning of Jack Sashes. They're going to be covering the weight. Oh, okay. Can I put Jack over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put him where he's safe. And I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. He was in the hospital for a week, and nobody thought that a mother might want to know. Jack asked me not to tell you unless absolutely necessary. Well, Never. don't you think it was necessary when he's on a ventilator, then in an induced coma? You didn't ring me straight away? I don't know if, if you had the first, most important person in your life dead, would you like to be told? I'm sorry, Linda. It was very difficult for me. I know you're upset. And I'm also upset that three weeks before he died, he made a will. What was that about? I thought it was silly. He forced the issue. You didn't think of his autistic brother on a disability pension? $200,000 is a pretty good price, isn't it? He has $200,000. Yep, $200,000. Yeah. I wasn't telling you I'd give it to them. Well, you put that in writing? No. Not with this animosity. Oh, yes. poor baby. I'm so feeling for you right now. But for Linda, there is still one big question she wants answered. Who injected her son with silicon? One, I would never have done that for him. I forbid him from doing so after my friend he died. I believe with all my heart that you are wholly and solely responsible for my son's death. Okay. I wish you were dead. I wish I were dead too, Linda. I've heard of the abuse at your hand. I saw him taking that collar off his neck and I saw him jump for joy. I've seen it. You want to claim to love him. You abused him. That's my son. That's my Jack. This is my son. Not what you turned him into. Not what you wanted him to be. Bigger, bigger, bigger. And now big enough. What sort of person injects into their freaking balls to please you? Someone who feels so badly about 
themselves, someone who was vulnerable, who just wanted your love at any cost, and the cost of his life. You are the one responsible for Jack's death. If he'd never met you, he would be still alive and he'd be home with me. You're not welcome at Jack's funeral. Just get out of my sight. Go. Get out of my house. I hate you. I wanted to remember my son the way he was and not, not what happened to him. So I'm waiting for that to be over so that I can proceed with the police. Wow. Um, I don't even know. For Linda, I just, and I think her words, you know, nothing can bring Jack back, but if this story can help other people in the same situation and other families who are watching their, their child, I mean, I've never even heard of anything no, like I, that. No, 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 but I mean, can you imagine that moment oh for Linda when she's confronting Dylan like that? Like, imagine everything that's gone into that junction, mm. that, like everything she's felt for so long, having to pretend there was nothing to draw Dylan out and then to be able to say that to him. I wonder how satisfying it was or not to have him smirk and giggle. I mean, I, as a mum, I couldn't, yeah. that's a bit where I couldn't have sat there. <sighs> um, we should point out, we did ask Dylan uh, for an interview. He didn't respond to our requests. At this stage, we should also point out there are no charges pending over Jack's death. All right, stay right there. We'll be back with more of the project very soon. Okay.